I'd like to invite you to join me in the blessing for study. So if you'd like to unmute, we can say the blessing together. Baruch Ata Benai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kidshanu Benitzvotav Etzivanu Laasok Bedivrei Torah Blessed is the one whose mitzvot make our lives holy and who commands us to immerse ourselves, to engage ourselves, la'asok, in words of Torah. And I'm really excited to introduce our teacher for this week, Rabbi Marcy Block. Uh, Rabbi Block is the newly minted director of Jewish community outreach for um, Trustbridge, which is a hospice in South Florida. Um, and she's going to be teaching today on the topic of finding hope, finding healing. So Rabbi Block, we didn't talk about this ahead of time, but if people have comments, is it okay if they put them into the chat, raise their hands, things like yeah, that? Yes, or just unmute where, you know, if that's okay with, you know, your structure. Yeah, I'm pretty open and yeah, that's great. I love it. Absolutely. Great. Well, welcome Rabbi Block. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you to Rabbi Strifer for um, inviting me to be here today. I'm so grateful to be here and uh, to be here with all of you. And I love looking at your Zoom screens and seeing all the different places you're from. I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, by the way, um, I saw someone was from Indianapolis, maybe Rachel. Um, I, I used to be from there. So or I, I worked there. I worked there a long time ago. But anyway, um, so um, so nice to see you. I thought that um, so I, I was told that this is like a series that's called Tikva through text. And um, so I'm sure you've been learning from many different rabbis about this concept of Tikva or hope, as we call it. Um, and, I, and I wanted to just take a moment and just ask you, like, what what is hope to you? And feel free to unmute and share or um, put it in the chat, whatever you're comfortable with, or just reflect on it if you're not someone who shares. Um, so what's hope to you? Okay, so Susan. There she is. I think uh, hope is multifaceted like a diamond, but I think that an element of hope is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Nice. That's a, there's a great book by Susan Jeffers, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Great book. Um, yeah, I, I love that. Okay, good. Anyone else? What is hope to you? I, I saw someone put it, uh, some in the chat. So let's see if we could uh, look at, I saw an, a community like this, a reason for living, something to look forward to. Um, beautiful. Anybody else? What is hope to you? Yep, Rabbi Stryfer. Yeah, I um, have really been moved by the idea which a previous teacher, and I can't remember who right now, brought to us, which is the idea that hope is an action. It's not only about thinking about or wishing for a better world, it's about doing things to bring about what we hope for. Mm, lovely, awesome. Um, and I love this, like hope is feeling of seeing the future in a good place, right? And boy, my gosh, uh, do we want to see the future be in a better place? I mean, the last few weeks have just been so hard with everything going on in Israel and the world. And yes, wait, right. We we definitely want to see the world in a better place. I want you to just take a moment for a second and also just think with me about, and, and you can just like maybe close your eyes if you'd like to, or, you know, or keep them open. And just to think about who is somebody in your life who brings you hope or gives you hope. And I just want to ask you, while you're thinking of that person, like, what is your body doing? Like, you know, I I have, um, you know, I have two kids, and I I I I can't help but to think of them, and like my my body kind of fills up with this light, if you will, like it kind of like it 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 feels good to just be thinking of right. Like, I want you to just be thinking of somebody in your life who gives you hope, right, or helps you to feel like there's hope in this world. Okay, I think it's really important to hold that. And then I just want you to think about like, again, just hold that concept of what is what is hope to you, right? Um, so I want to, um, I want you to just also think one more is what what does hope do for us? 
And again, you could put that in the chat. You could just reflect on it. What does hope do for us? Yeah, so Susan? Hope prevent allows us to not fall into the pit of despair. Yeah, it helps us. Yeah, I love that. Great. Um, it keeps us going during hard times. It helps us get through the day. Wow. You all are good. I like this. All right. Okay. So, so I, I thought I'd start with, um, you know, uh, and, and I know that you're all coming from different places and I'm sure different backgrounds. And I, I, I'm sure that, um, and if I, if I talk over anyone's head or whatever, I, I apologize in advance. Uh, but I think many of us might know that it is the month of Elul and we are in this preparatory time or preparation a time of preparation, I should say, uh, to prepare our hearts for the High Holy Days. And there's many things as uh, as Jews that we do to get ready. And um, and I and I couldn't help but to think about this text that um, you know is 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 a well known text, and it it tells us that there are seven questions. Has anyone heard of this before? Yes, no, raise your hand if you have, sorry, or thumbs up, whatever. Okay, that, that there are seven questions that um that we will we will face a heavenly tribunal when we, you know, when we, you know, when we pass away, and that there will be seven questions that we will be asked, right? So I want to just show you, I want to show you this text. So let me let me uh, share my screen and um we'll we'll go from here and we'll look at the text together. Okay, so all right, so we got our what we got our questions. All right, so here's the text. The text comes from the Talmud, uh, Tractate Shabbat, thirty one A eleven, um, and uh, so I, I don't know if somebody wants to read. Uh, do we do that, or is, is do we have any? You know, yeah, okay, good. So I, I like that. So anyone who would love to read, feel free to just unmute. Um, I can't see all of you at this moment. I only see four of you. So anybody would like to read. Rabbi Block, I was able to actually get the text without that band in the middle. Do you want me to share so it's a little easier to see? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, let me see if I can uh, let's see. However, uh, we were having some technical, weird yeah. technical issues this morning with Safari. So here, that's, I think, a little better, right? Perfect. Yeah, but you just have to make it really big because my eyes are not that great anymore. Here we go. Um, oh, Oh, much better. There we go. Thank All right. You. Yeah. Oh, good. I see some nodding heads. Uh, their eyes are like mine. Okay, good. Um, okay, so um, so would someone like to read the text? Okay, so Bob, you'll read for us. After departing from this world, when a person is brought to judgment for the life she lived in this world, they say to her in the order of that verse, did you conduct business faithfully? Did you designate times for Torah study? Did you engage in procreation? Did you hope for redemption? Did you engage in the dialectics of wisdom or understand one matter from another? Okay, so right, a great text to be looking at at this time of year as we're getting ready for the High Holy Days. Like, what did you do? How did you lead your life? You know, how did you live fully, meaningfully? But here's here's the question, right? So there's 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 something about hope here. Um, what is what does it say about hope? What does it say, Bob? Did you hope for redemption? Did you hope for redemption? Redemption. It's like such a big word, right? Like, what does redemption mean? <clears throat> All right. So I just want what does what does hope mean here? What do you think hope means here? I can answer redemption more easily. Here in Maine, you can take your bottles back for redemption. <laughs> nice, nice, right? What what else? What what else do we what else do we think like so right? Did you hope for redemption? Right? What does that like what does that mean? Did you hope for what? So like I, I usually think I like to think like redemption is like freedom or like liberation. Right. We talk a lot about, oh, wait, I think there's some chats going on here. Um, being restored to our true selves. Love that. Beautiful. Right. Um, anybody else? Did you hope for redemption? 
there's a forward lookingness here. Redemption means tikkun olam, right? It means like repair, or traditionally the Messiah, right? So there's this belief that the world can be better than it is. Love, love. So, so good, right? And I think like, I think it, the fact that this is like in these questions, in these seven questions that we're going to get asked, you know, when we are, you know, brought to judgment for the life we've lived. I think that in and of itself says so much to me about like, what is hope, right? Like you got to clearly have hope, right? Like, because we're going to get asked it according to our holy text, right? Okay. And then, um, so it just, again, it, 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 it helps, you know, it makes me think, what does it mean to live with hope, right? What does it mean to live with hope? Okay, so we're gonna let's let's go on to the to the next text. So I want to just like I asked all of you, what does it like? What does it mean to have hope? What is a definition of hope? By the way, numerous rabbis have happen to have definitions of hope, but I happen to really like this one, and I wanted to share it with you. So this is by Rabbi Maurice Lamb, um, and would someone mind reading this one? I'll read, unless somebody else would like to. Uh, Without hope, no child could emerge from helpless infancy. Without hope, no person has a future. Without hope, no society could survive. Without hope, there is no religion, no community, no friendship, no achievement, no country. Without hope, life is a meaningless and absurd existence. Without it, there can be no love and no family life because no marriage can survive can survive hopelessness. Everyone needs to face the fact that life holds more despair than pleasure. And without hope, we could not live our lives through. What do you think of this? Do you like it? As, uh, Bob, do you have your hand up? Uh it's really a negative. It doesn't really define it in a positive way, but in a negative way. And that's okay because of the 613 commandments, most of them are negative. There are just a few maybe that are positive. Okay. Well, I think, I think it's like, like half, right? Maybe, but I, I think, but I think the, the, the question is, so why, why don't you like it? You think, you think it's kind of negative? I didn't mean to imply that I didn't like it. I'm just stating a fact. Oh, you just think you just think in general. Well, without hope, without hope, without hope. Okay, the 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 wording, right? Like without hope. Okay, okay, good. Um, but it doesn't say what hope is. Okay. Huh. This. Okay. So, and then, um, Sabrina, I think you have your hand up. Th this quote does feel negative to me because he says life holds more despair than pleasure. I don't like to face that fact. Mm -hmm. yeah and and anybody else like what like i i think there's something really in and mike if you could sorry about my striper if you could scroll up i'd appreciate it it's okay i'm happy to be called by any name am i scrolling to here or uh, just to just to um you know again um like what 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 is hope here and what is rabbi lamb saying that hope is um it's like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I don't know. I sort I sort oh yeah, go. Yeah. I I I don't know if this this thought might come out half baked, but there's an idea in philosophy, and right now I can't think of the words or the name, but that's sort of like the world around us is this blur of like images and things, and we give structure to it. When you touch something, you you your body interacts with that thing in order to produce the structure of, oh, this is a pen, right? Or this is yellow. That's not objective truth. That's happening between the interact the interaction between the object and me. So I think he's almost defining the whole as like the structure in which we see the world, right? You can look around the world and you can see absurdity. You can see despair. You can see all kinds of things. But when we live with hope, then we are 
able to see something different in the world, that it helps us to, I mean, I think he is using somewhat negative language here, like to survive. I would rather say to thrive, right? But I think hope maybe is sort of that structure that, uh, that enables us to see the world in a positive light. Yeah. And I think um, I see Sabrina has a point about hope in the chat is that hope is what sustains us. And I think that's she's referring to this text. But I also see it as like we can't live without it. D did anyone else see that, too? Like we we would not exist almost right without it, without it. We can't have a family. We can't have religion, community, nothing like right. That's without. we cannot survive without hope. Um, Susan. Yes, exactly. Um, I think the title, a definition of hope, is somewhat misleading. Oh, that I just I just wrote that. That's not what he called it. Okay, that, like, that because was what like, he's what... saying is, yeah. in the absence of hope, all of these things transpire. So it's more um, what would be what it would be like to live with no hope, and I think people are getting kind of hung up on the negativeness of it, where. In fact, he's really um, making positive statements, but yeah. let's say in the absence of this, then that, in sort of that kind of logic. And um, certainly they are very broad statements uh, that you can agree or disagree with or look at from one perspective of another. And uh, uh, Sabrina makes a point that she's uncomfortable uh, facing the fact that life holds more despair than pleasure. And I am uncomfortable with that too, because I would say more accurately that life holds despair and pleasure. Hmm. And, that, and that what there's not more of one or the other yeah i think that's a good point or different for different people right mm -hmm. yeah cheryl so i was looking at this and i was going through the whole thing and kind of flipping each one around so i was reading it as with hope children emerge from helpless infancy with hope, uh, people have a future. Mm. With hope, nice. society survives. Awesome. And it actually has less impact that way. Mm. So by writing it in this, this negative format, he's actually giving it more emphasis mm. than it would be if, if he just said, you know, with hope societies could survive, with hope there could be religion, with hope there could be community, with hope there could be friendship. It just sounds kind of like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you know, if there's hope, then there's stuff could happen. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a, I love that you did that exercise for us. And I, I think there's something really powerful here. And I think that and going back to the idea of like, can we live without hope? Like, what would our lives look like if we did not have hope? Right. Um, yeah. Th thank you, Teresa, for saying that, that the families of the hostages in Israel live with hope daily. Yeah. I mean, daily, like they are out, you know, and, you know, every day i mean I, and i have dear friends who are who are you know my my israeli family who who are there they're you know holding up the signs for the people that they i mean right all these days later you know over 300 and whatever i don't know the number today 300 over 330 days we're like we're way past that at this point but um right they're just they're they they haven't given up right and maybe having hope is not giving up i think someone might have said that in the beginning to begin with Maybe he's chosen that without literary Um, Yes, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so I want to go to the next text. And I want to, you know, so it's interesting, right? Without hope, um, 
so and I oh wait yep so I I want to just think about right so we didn't I I love uh, I'm not sure I think it was who was it was it Susan who just tore that apart and did the without um and with was it you Susan or Cheryl I'm not sure who did it who did it was it Cheryl okay I I I love that because I think it sets us up perfectly of like what does it mean to live with hope what does it mean to live without hope right? What does it mean to live without hope? I guess that's my next question. What does it mean to live without it? Um, Carol? I'm going back to the previous one. As far as I'm concerned, he lost me as soon as he said, without hope, life is a meaningless and absurd uh, existence. Uh, I don't know why you picked this particular individual, but uh, I find this extremely unhopeful, the way he's presenting this. Uh -huh. And I agree, Susan, maybe you have a good point that he's doing it as a literary device to challenge the reader, but I don't need to be challenged at this point. I need to be inspired. So yeah. I wanna, I'm, I'm finding him very negative. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I think going back to the question, so if we, don't have hope, what, what, um, I guess the question is, what happens to us when we don't have hope? What, why, why do we usually not have hope? What happens? You just keep going. <laughs> that's what, I think that's true, but what, what is it that prevents us? How about the question is, what is it that I think Bob said that without hope, you fall into depression. And yeah. um, in many cases, that is definitely the case. It's not a global feeling. It may be individually, but certainly um, there have been times when I have been very depressed and, and felt hopeless, although managed to climb out of the whole. But I, I think that he said it correct. He was. Yeah, I I think I think that there's right. So let let's go to the next text because I think it goes right into it, right? So, um, I don't know how many of us have kn who know this text or maybe learned the song when you were younger. Uh, so this is a text by Rabbi Nachman of Bratislav, who actually was a Hasidic rabbi who was actually known for um um living a life of of depression he he was he he's he struggled he really wrestled um so he he wrote this text kol haolam kulo gesher tsarma od right so the whole world is a very narrow bridge but the important thing is not fear at all anybody have an idea of what this text mean or have you looked at it in your last groups? I don't want to, you have, okay. Oh, you haven't. Okay. I was going to say, I didn't want to be repetitive if you have. I, I have a thought if it's okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm talking a lot, but you know, I'm a rabbi. So <laughs> um, I, 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 I see the same thing in this text that I saw in the last one, which was, a person, maybe, and I don't know Rabbi Maurice Lamb, I didn't know him, but I wonder if, you know, these are people who are struggling with, you know, seeing that there is, are challenges in the world. And so they, they then understand that hope is the way that we move forward. If, if I, since I have the power to scroll back up, this statement that without hope, life is meaningless and absurd is actually not a negative statement. To me, it's a neutral statement. Meaningless doesn't mean bad. Meaningless means devoid of meaning, right? So, sorry, I don't know what I just did there. But so what is hope then? Hope is the source of meaning in the world. And, and I kind of see that here in this text as well, that like, Hope is how we walk through the world, a world where meaning isn't something that just happens to you. It's something that you make. And hope is how we make meaning by telling ourselves that you can put one foot in front of the other and walk across the bridge. Ooh, you should write that down, Rabbi. That is beautiful. <laughs> really beautiful. Uh, you know, and and I think he 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 said it perfectly. He said, you know, and walk across the bridge, right? So um, I, you know, I learned this text when I was very young at a, 
at a retreat, uh, a Jewish retreat. And, um, and I, and I, I never really knew what it meant. Like the whole world is a very narrow bridge, but the important thing is not to fear at all. Um, and yeah, so, right. So the whole idea is right. There's going to be narrow things in our lives, narrowness, narrow walking, narrow bridge. Um, but you know, the whole idea is not to be afraid, right? Well, <laughs> let me ask you, do we get afraid of things in our lives? Raise your hand if you've been afraid. Okay, I'm gonna raise mine because I have fears, right? Um, it's funny, I have, you know, I have a, a little daughter, she's eight, you know, she's afraid of spiders, she's afraid, like, right, we have fears. We're like, this is, this is, this is like life, right? We're afraid of things. And, and I think we're afraid of more things now because we live in this crazy world, but we won't go off on that tangent, right? So, so, but this text had different meanings to it. And I won't go into it because I know like I'm very, I'm, I could, I'm very short on time here. I could see, I don't know if you're going to cut, like if we could go over a few minutes, maybe, I don't know, but yeah, a couple. Okay. Um, Let's do this. We can, we can go over by like two or three minutes. And then okay. I think we'll have to cut it off because people do really expect to, to be right. done at 1230. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so I think what, I think what's really important is um, here, there, there's a, a, a teaching that the text didn't really mean what it actually says here. It actually was that, that you shouldn't get paralyzed in the difficult things in your life, right? You shouldn't get stuck in them. And right, when we have fear, we do get stuck in it. And I think it goes, so now the question for me is right when, if you get stuck in your fear, how do you have hope? I mean, that's a question for all of us, right? If you get stuck in fear of whatever, how do you have hope? Can you have hope if you are stuck in fear? I saw Vicky's hand. Oh, okay. I can't see. I only see Sabrina going like this, and I agree. Um, I think it takes work. Yeah. It, it, it to have hope, you know, and if you're in despair or depression or anything else, I think in order to have hope, you have to have known hope at some point um, in order to, you know, do that work and then uh, dig yourself out and keep going. I mean, if you look at, you know, people who are, you know, absolutely devoid of any hope, maybe living in abject poverty or have nothing, that's all they know. So wish for something better? I don't know. I mean, I have been tremendously depressed and had to dig myself out, but it's yeah. I have known hope. I, I think you've never known something. I don't know how you move forward. That's just me. It's just, you know, blind faith is not anything I had. It's just not within me. I have to have known something to, to do it. Yeah. Either some fantasy world or whatever. I don't know. But hope has to live in some sort of reality for me. Hmm. So, hmm. Just me. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like, I, and I think uh, what Paula is writing in the chat ties into what you just said. Also be actively hopeful, not just sitting around hoping, but we have to, right? We have to do. Um, okay, I, I feel, next slide or next uh, next part, please. Thank you. So so this goes back to Rabbi Morris Lamb. And by the way, he's known for, um, and it's interesting that Rabbi Stryfer, you pointed out that like his, you know, um, he's known for one of his, famous books is on death and dying. So um, I wonder if like, kind of to what you said earlier, if he, but he also, I think he wrote um, a book on um, marriage and life, but, 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 but I think it's interesting that maybe his model, but, but he, he also says in his book, um, so the power of hope. So no matter what, never be afraid to hope fear paralyzes us. Same thing that Rabbi Nachman was saying in Kul, um, in, you know, the whole world is a very narrow bridge, Kul Halalam Kulo. Fear paralyzes us. It provides no energy, gives us no courage, offers no practical solutions. It locks us into nothingness. But hope, like dreams, 
come true often against all odds. Okay, let's not analyze it too much because we don't have that much time, but I want to get back to where we started because I think it's a great question again um, to be doing during this month of Elul and doing our own you know, introspection, what we call cheshbon hanefesh, to be thinking about like, how do we want to change and be better? And those seven questions, and I know someone put in the chat that like there, there might be five, whatever. There is a whole question of like exactly how many there were. There, it, there is this great book, by the way, by uh, Rabbi Ron Wolfson that you might want to read maybe during this time of year called The Seven Questions You're Asked in Heaven. Great book. Okay. Um, so um, so this is from the book. So I want to just ask you to uh, scroll up, please. Thank you. Um, the fourth question is Sapita Yeshua, right? Did you live with hope in your heart, right? So this is like that question, right? If there are five questions, seven questions, whatever, right? There's these questions that we're going to get asked when we face the heavenly tribunal. And one of them is going to be asked, one of, them's, one of them is going to be if we had hope, right? If we had hope in our lives, right? Um, and and he, he um, again, this is from Dr. Ron Wolfson. Um, it's about your attitude to life. In the biblical story of creation, after each day, God says that it was good. After completing creation, God says, Tov ma'od, it was very good. Rabbi Ed Feinstein suggests that good is the most important word in the chapter. The whole world sees chaos, terror, random death as inevitable. And this one little people, a people who suffered more than any other, this people has the cosmic chutzpah to say it doesn't have to be that way. Come, be God's partner. There is goodness in creating the world, right? So um, coming back to this question is, um, you know, what, what, um, what they're saying is, did you live with hope in your heart? Did you live with hope? Did you live, um, did you live with a certain attitude? right? That's what this this question is about, that supposedly, according to the Talmud, we're going to get asked, you know, before the heavenly tribunal is, did you live with hope in your heart? And did you have a certain attitude? And right, we get this example by Rabbi Ed Feinstein that, look, there's there was all this craziness happening in the world, but we saw it as good. We saw it as good. We saw it as an opportunity. We saw it as an opportunity to work with God. I know I'm like really going over. Okay, one last slide here, right here. If we go or scroll up. Um, so I I wanted to just kind of touch on, and it sounds like maybe you had a similar lesson in the past, but that um kind of what Viktor Frankl, same kind of thing. The last and greatest human freedom is the freedom to choose your attitude. So um we have a choice um when and and I think, and I want to make sure I say this as I'm teaching that like, we have a choice. That doesn't always mean that it's easy. And I think, and I'm not sure who just spoke, maybe it was Vicky, right? We have to, we have to actively choose, right? When we, when we um, are struggling in our lives or when we have fears, we have to actually, we have to really work. We have to actively choose to change our attitude and to have hope. And that is really hard sometimes when life is hard and the world is hard or something is going on in your life. It is sometimes really hard to choose hope. But what our tradition is saying is that it is it is really about our attitude um, and how almost like a perspective, how we, how we look at things. Um, and I, I hope and pray that um, we can um, during this month of Elul, where we are supposed to be doing reflection and thinking about the life that we're living and the the questions like if how we've lived, how we lived our lives. I hope that we will ask, you know, do we have hope? Do we have hope in our hearts? Will we work to change that? How can we work to change it? Maybe sometimes that means like we need somebody to help us. It might be a friend, maybe it's a counselor, maybe whoever, but sometimes it means that we need to, um, you know, to push ourselves a little bit, even when it's really, really hard. Um, so I, I hope and pray for all of us. I wish, I wish all of you a Shana Tova, Happy New Year, filled with hope, filled with, um, you know, with meaning, filled um, with hopefully living, you know, a life worth of meaning, reflecting on you know, how do, how do we live with more hope, especially during these difficult times in our world? How do we live with even more hope? 
So sorry, I felt a little rushed at the end, but I, again, wish everybody a Shana Tova. A huge thank you, Rabbi Marcy Block, for this really beautiful teaching. Perfect ideas to enter into the High Holy Days. Uh, next week, we study with Rabbi Edwin Goldberg. We are still on for the next couple of weeks, then we'll be off for Rosh Hashanah. So I hope that you have a really wonderful um, continuation of this season of, of preparation for the High Holy Days. Thanks again to Rabbi Marcy Block, and I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Thank you again, Rabbi Striper. Thank you, everyone. It's so nice to be with you. I hope I can be with you again sometime. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thanks. Yep. Yeah.